But if you're going to build out a Ford Transit van as a van camper or bug out van or moto van or live the van life and explore the great outdoors, you're going to want to watch this video because I'm going to show you some free resources that will help you plan and build your van. <music> So you've purchased your van, whether it be new or used, you may be in the planning stage or you may be already completely finished your build or you may be in the middle of your build. The information I'm going to share with you can help you. This information is freely available and the upfitters of Ford Transit vans use this information to really properly integrate their upfits with the Ford Transit, whether it be a cargo van, a passenger van, a cab chassis van or even a cutaway van. You may be aware of the Bodybuilder Advisory Service already from Ford, but you're gonna to wanna to check out the information that is freely available to you on this website. So the first thing you wanna do when you get to this website is actually scroll down. I'm gonna go down and choose Transit. And once you click on this, you get available to you all the related information. The first thing I like to take a look at is the related bulletins. And I go through and try to find the model that I'm working with or models previous to mine. Those changes may have not been made to my particular van. So one thing I will mention is not all of these bulletins are going to apply to your particular van, whether you have purchased a passenger van, a cargo van, a cutaway or a chassis cab. You, when you go through this information, you got to make sure that the information is applicable to your specific van. All right, so I'm going to scroll down and pick some of the ones for my particular model 2015 MY Transit Reverse Signal Access. I see this question a lot on some of the Facebook forums and also on the Ford Transit forums. And this applies to all 2015 model year transit vehicles, reverse signal access, and I'm not sure exactly which year they started including the reverse camera in the transits. I know mine already has it, so this is not anything particularly that I'm interested in, but it may be something that you're interested in if you have one of those models that doesn't have a reverse camera and you want to add a reverse camera to it. It tells you exactly where to pick up the signal here, and it's recommended in here it says the 2015 transits do not come equipped with accessible reverse signal. Factory installed tail lamp reverse circuits are designed to power them factory reverse lamps and cannot support additional loads. That's good information. So it says here upfitters installing aftermarket equipment are directed to use the reverse trailer tow circuit. And then it goes on to tell you how to access that trailer tow circuit and what the pinout is. So this is very useful information. Instead of guessing about where you need to tap into this, Ford has already provided you that information. So it's really good information on bulletins here. So I suggest that you would go through those, even if you're in the purchasing stage of a van, just to, to check and see what's available to you in these bulletins. So I'm going to scroll down and talk about some of the other related information here. One of the things that's of real interest is the specs on the, the uh, Transit. I'm going to go down and check the 2019 Transit specs because that's the particular van I had. And that was the back when I was buying, I was in the market for a 2019. You can see that they already have the 2020s and 2021s posted here as well. But uh, this is good information if you're looking at planning your build out. Even before you have the van, it tells you exactly the measurements of the cargo or passenger space and where things are laid out, what the heights are, what the widths are. So when you're planning your materials and resources, this is good information to have because sometimes you can start building some of this and mocking it up before you even have the van. And you can see that they have the cutaway, the chassis cab, even the passenger vans here as well. So very useful information about how far the seats are apart from each other how much cargo width and length you have. And for me, I referred back to these particular documents when I added a third seat to my cargo van because it was important to me that I had enough leg room for somebody to sit in that third seat. So one of the other useful publications is the Bodybuilders Layout Book. This kind of gives you the me measurements and layout of all the different types of vans as well as the payloads. This is similar information, but goes into a little bit more detail. It really gives you some detailed drawings here of how the seats, passengers, leg room is laid out. All right, so I saved the best for last. Let's take a look at the Transit Body and Equipment Mounting Manual. And you may have heard 
folks on the forums or in uh, you know a Facebook group or just in general passing talking about the BIM, B-E-M-M. So the BIM is the Body and Equipment Mounting Manual. Now this manual has a lot of detailed information, but let's take a look at it. It's really good information that you're gonna find useful when you're building your van. All right, so it is a PDF doc. I would suggest that you take a look at this document even if you've already built your van. This document provides some really good information that I think you'll find useful for your build specifically around what you should and should not do. And that's important if you want to be safe doing this build out. Let's take, for example, let's say you want to add a heater to your van, like an auxiliary heating unit. Maybe it's a gas, a gasoline system, similar to the diesel heaters, but one that runs off of gas. A lot of good information here. It says do not cut into the original fuel supply lines. And it says for vehicles that don't have the auxiliary fuel line, you wanna tap into the auxiliary port on top of the fill sender unit located on top of the fuel tank. That's some very useful information. And it kind of goes through and, and tells you the procedure to actually do that. And some precautionary steps go through and shows you where the auxiliary port is located as well. And, uh, you know, this one might be of use to you as well. Specifically when you're mounting things to the floor of the van, precautionary drill zones. You don't want to drill into your gas tank. And you can see here that anything within this red area here, you want to stay away from, right? And it gives you the exact measurement. It also gives you some information about precautionary drill zones in the cargo doors, in the sides of the van. So useful information because there are a lot of wiring harnesses that are run throughout the van. You definitely don't want to screw into one of those harnesses and make a lot of trouble for yourself. All right, so let's talk about lifting for a minute. So there have been a lot of people that's had some mixed results from shops lifting the van, and I'm not talking about jack points. The jack points are actually different than the lift points. The lift points are for shop lifts, those arms that go up under the van and lift the entire van off of the ground. Well, you can see here, it clearly points out what the lift points are on both the wagon and the chassis cab cutaway. You can see those with those black dots here. So if you're interested or you may have your own shop lift, then those are the points you need to use for lifting. So a lot of good uh, information in this document. All right, so let's take a look at some of the electrical components here. It does a really good job of telling you what type of uh, connectors and splices can be used safely within the van how to prevent squeaks, where to ground it, and it goes through some of the grommets or access points to run electrical through the van as well. Those of you that are looking some ground points for the coach build out in your van, want to take note of this. There's ground points provided throughout the van, and you can see here they do a really good job of laying out where those ground points are. All right, so let's move down to the body and paint section. Now this is interesting. It tells you if you're gonna weld or if you're gonna cut, how to prep the surface, how to coat the surface after you do a weld or cut. So really good information in here. There's been a lot of people also ask about where to mount solar panels or different roof rack systems, et cetera, et cetera. People that have tried to drill through some of the boron steel parts in the van. Those sections in the van are hardened for a reason. So I would take forward precautionary measures here and not drill into those sections. And you can see they do a really good job of laying out where those boron steel parts are in the van. So you notice the rails of the van here, these cross members and all the way up into the top of the van and down the cargo side those are stiffened these sections at the top are probably to help in, in case there's a rollover they're probably there for stiffness and rigidity because there's a big sliding door so let's move down and talk a little bit about the roof section it actually goes through some of the racks and carriers and it tells you here apertures must not cut through roof valves um, for obvious reasons, um, but it shows you where the roof panel apertures are. It tells you the load rating of the roof apertures. The roof panel can support up to 2.2 pounds on an unsupported area of roof. Loads of up to a maximum of 55 pounds must be distributed over the full length of the roof rails. There's some really good information in here, especially if you're going to install 
a fan or an air conditioning unit on top of the van or even a rack. There's a special section on roof racks and load carriers as well. It tells you the bolt and the thread size and the maximum intrusion of the bolts to actually install a roof rack. This is something that a lot of you will go through as you install a roof rack to have solar panels mounted or even some cargo area space up on the top of the van or even to get up there and just walk around and uh, you know view the great outdoors from on top of your van so and anytime you drill or weld or whatever you may do cut through the van you're going to need to protect against corrosion because it will corrode I just went through a few sections in the document. The body and equipment mounting manual is your friend. I would suggest anybody that has a van and currently has a build out or is thinking about building out a van, go through this document and see if there's some things that you may have missed in your build or go through it and get some guidance for your build to make things safe for you. All right, so I'm just gonna show you the link here and uh, I'm just gonna show you the main link as well. So this will get you to the Ford Bodybuilder Advisory Service. And once you're here, you can just scroll down and choose whatever particular model you're building out. And it will provide a list of all the documents available for you. I'm sure there's resources for other countries that are available out there. I'm not familiar with those. But if you are familiar with them, link them in the comments down below. I'm sure there's also information available for other bands on the market from different manufacturers. I'm not familiar with those because I only have a Ford, so I'm only interested in the Ford Transit at this moment. But if you do a little research, you can probably find similar information available for the other manufacturers as well. All right, that's going to do it for this video. I hope you find this information useful. Again, you're not going to need all the information available in there. It is something that is very detailed and for most professional upfitters, but you can glean certain bits of information. I hope you enjoyed the content and you know what to do. Until next time, skill up and ride, van up and go, and hey, everybody needs a plan B.